His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held at the Kremlin Palace in Moscow an official discussion session with the Russian President Vladimir Putin on the occasion of His Majesty the King's visit to Russia. Ваше Величество, дорогие друзья, позвольте вас сердечно поприветствовать в России. Ваше Величество, мы не виделись с вами с 2016 года, хотя были в контакте все это время. И вот совсем недавно, в марте, в очередной раз разговаривали по телефону. В следующем году мы отмечаем 35 лет установления дипломатических отношений между нашими странами. Ну, за эти годы многое сделано. Сделано в строительстве отношений между нашими государствами. У нас э, хорошие контакты очень по линии МИДов. И по очень многим вопросам международной повестки наши позиции близки. Совсем недавно, неделю назад, проходило было заседание Лиги Арабских Государств, где Бахрейн сейчас председательствует. И, конечно, мне было очень... Интересно узнать ваше мнение и о ситуации на Ближнем Востоке, и о том, как шло обсуждение этих проблем. Что касается уровня торгового, торговых связей, то у нас он носит, к сожалению, пока символический характер, но тенденции хорошие. Вот что касается инвестиционного взаимодействия, то здесь ситуация более благоприятная. Осуществляется примерно 30 крупных проектов, общий объем пакета где-то 500 миллионов долларов. У нас хорошие взаимоотношения в области культуры. В этом году мы намерены провести дни Бахрейна в России, а в следующем году, насколько мне известно, коллеги договорились о том, что будут проведены русские сезоны в вашей стране. Развиваются и другие гуманитарные контакты, прежде всего в сфере образования, науки. И здесь тоже есть хорошие перспективы. В общем, мы очень рады вас видеть. Добро пожаловать в Россию, Ваше Величество. الدعوة الكريمة وعلى حسن الاستقبال وفي الواقع صار لنا مدة ما زرنا موسكو الجميلة واشتقنا كثير لزيارتكم ولزيارة الأصدقاء والقصد هو تجديد التعاون والتطوير التعاون في مختلف المجالات الثنائية كذلك من أهم أهداف الزيارة هو إطلاع فخامتكم على نتائج القمة العربية أصدقائكم العرب يكنون لكم كل محبة وكل تقدير لدور روسيا في يعني تعاطفها مع القضايا العربية العادلة ولله الحمد وكان اتفاق تام بأن نتوصل إلى مؤتمر للسلام دولي وروسيا هي أول دولة أتوجه لها بطلب دعم هذا المؤتمر لأن بلا دعم روسيا لا قيمة لهذا المؤتمر وكذلك الدول 
العالمية المؤثرة فنأمل بإذن الله أن نتوفق بتحقيق هذا المؤتمر في البحرين إحنا طلبنا أن يكون في البحرين كذلك نهني فخامتكم بفوزكم المستحق وهذا دليل على ثقة الشعب بقيادتكم الحكيمة وهذا يجعل الجميع في منطقتنا وفي عالمنا العربي فرحين بهذا الفوز واستقرار روسيا العزيزة ونرى اليوم نموا اقتصاديا واجتماعيا وأمنيا على كل الظروف الصعبة اللي تمر فيها روسيا ومنطقتنا كذلك غزة أحد النقاط المؤلمة بالنسبة لنا ونريد توقف هذه الحرب اليوم قبل بكرة في الواقع يعني حفاظا على الأبرياء الأبرياء تأثروا كثير نزحوا بالمئات الألوف من بيوتهم من مناطقهم وهم يدورون في بلدهم اللي ربما طولها أربعين كيلو متر وعرضها 12 كيلو متر يعني عوائل أطفال نساء والخاص مستمر احنا ركزنا على هالأبرياء كيف نساعدهم إنسانيا أما الخلاف الخلاف معروف تاريخي قديم ولا كان في تشاور العمليات الحربية لم يكن فيها تشاور لكن الإخوة العرب تفهموا الموقف في القمة العربية ولأول مرة كان فيه إجماع عند الجميع الحقيقة وهذا شيء يفرحني أنا شخصيا بأن المسؤولية للعام القادم أتابع مع إخواننا العرب أمور قضاياهم ولن نستغني عن دعمكم وكذلك نفكر في حسن الجوار مع جيراننا بصورة عامة وجيراننا لا شك نحاول أن تكون بيننا وبينهم علاقات طبيعية دبلوماسية تجارية ثقافية ما في شك مرة أخرى دعم فخامتكم لهذا الأمر يكون شيء الحقيقة مرحبة من جانب أهل البحرين عموما وأنا شخصيا The two sides discussed the course of bilateral cooperation and the advanced level they reached, as well as the means to develop cooperation to serve the two countries' goals and interests. They also discussed Arab and regional developments, as well as the escalation and tensions in the region as a result of the devastating war in the Gaza Strip, the regional and international efforts for a ceasefire and releasing hostages and detainees, providing humanitarian aid for the civilians to alleviate the suffering of the people in the Gaza Strip. Both leaders affirmed the need for de-escalation and promoting diplomatic action to settle the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and reach a just, comprehensive and sustainable peace for the Palestinian cause in accordance with international legitimacy, resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative to establish the independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital and the support of the efforts to declare Palestine as a state and accept it as a permanent member in the UN. They also affirmed the importance of the UN Security Council's assuming its responsibility towards ending world conflicts and disputes, resolving them according to international law and the UN Charter to maintain global security and peace and harness international efforts to consolidate global stability and support sustainable development to achieve the progress and prosperity of the people of the world. In honor of His Majesty the King, the Russian President held a lunch banquet on the occasion of His Majesty's visit to Russia at the Kremlin Palace that was attended by the official delegation accompanying his Majesty the King, and a number of senior officials from the Russian government. His Majesty exchanged friendly talks with the Russian president during the banquet, which reflect the deep-rooted historical relations between the two countries and the keenness on strengthening them. 
Following the banquet, His Majesty the King exchanged with the Russian President commemorative gifts on the occasion. His Majesty the King and the Russian President witnessed the signing of memorandums of understanding and agreements between the two countries during His Majesty's visit to Russia. An MOU between the two countries' ministries of health and the health field was signed. The MOU aims to strengthen and develop cooperation between the two countries in the health field on the basis of mutual interest. It was signed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, and the Russian Minister of Health, Mikhail Murashko. An MOU between the Bahrain National Health Regulatory Authority and the Russian Ministry of Industry and Trade on Enhancing Cooperation in Pharmaceutical Production. The MOU aims to enhance Russian-Bahraini cooperation in pharmaceutical and medical industries on a competitive basis and mutual benefit. It was signed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Russian Ministry of Industry and Trade, Anton Alikhanov. An MOU between Bahrain's Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications and Russia's Ministry of Transportation and Transport and Transient. The MOU aims to improve the efficiency of transport links to organize and increase the volume of passengers and goods transport in bilateral traffic and transit on the North-South International Transport Corridor. It was signed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Russian Minister of Transport, Roman Starovolt. An MOU between the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities and the Russian Ministry of Culture on the Russian Seasons Project in Bahrain 2025. The MOU aims to implement the Russian Seasons Program to present Russian cultural heritage in Bahrain. It was signed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Russian Minister of Culture. A cooperation program between the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities and the Russian Ministry of Culture for the years 2024 to 2027. The program aims to implement the MOU signed between the two countries on the 2nd of December 2008 to strengthen the friendly relations and cooperation in the field of culture. It was signed by the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Russian Minist Minister of Culture. An MOU between the Supreme Council for the Environment, the Ross Congress Foundation, and the Kamshutka Falcon Center the MOU aims to expand cooperation in protecting rare bird species at the international level. It was signed by the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Vice President of the Ross Congress Foundation, Gregory Valking, and the Director of Kamshatka Falcon Center Projects, Vladimir Tomasov. An MOU between the Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Russian Diplomatic Academy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The MOU aims to cooperate on a regular basis in the field of training and improving the professional skills of diplomats within the framework of strengthening relations between the diplomatic corps in the two countries. It was signed by the, the Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs and the head of the Diplomatic Academy of the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Alexander Yakovetko. The signing ceremony was attended by the delegation accompanying His Majesty the King and senior officials of the Russian government. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa visited the headquarters of the Federal Assembly of Russia within the framework of His Majesty's official visit to Russia, where he was received by the President of the Federal Assembly, Valentina Mavienko, 
who welcomed His Majesty and his visit to Russia. His Majesty the King wrote a message in the register of the VIP visitors in which he expressed gratitude for the invitation of the Russian President Vladimir to Putin to visit Russia and for the warm welcome and hospitality received, which affirms the friendly relations between the two countries and the historical and constructive bilateral cooperation at all levels, and serves mutual interests and meets the aspirations of the two people for security development and prosperity. His Majesty praised the efforts and active role of the Federal Assembly to support the comprehensive development process in Russia and strengthen its position internationally, wishing Russia and its people peace, stability and progress. During the visit, His Majesty met with the President of the Assembly and reviewed the close relations of friendship and cooperation between the two countries. His Majesty praised the advanced level reached in all fields, especially at the parliamentary and democratic levels, and the exchange of visits and experiences with regard to parliamentary and legislative work. His Majesty expressed pleasure with the results achieved by his official successful visit to Russia and his discussions with the Russian President Putin, which will have a positive impact on strengthening the strong historical partnership with Russia. His Majesty praised the development of the parliamentary process in Bahrain and the important achievement and gains made by the legislative authority for the advancement of the kingdom and the progress of its people. During the meeting, views were exchanged on a number of regional and international issues and developments of common interest. For her part, the President of the Assembly expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for the visit, praising his role in consolidating bilateral relations and improving cooperation with Russia in all fields. She praised the role of the Supreme Council for Women and its achievements and programs aimed at the advancement of Bahraini women.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at his residence in the Russian capital Moscow the chairman of the Mufti Shura Council of Russia, head of the Religious Administration for Muslims of the Russian Federation, His Eminence, the Grand Mufti, Sheikh Rawi Ainuddin, and his accompanying delegation to greet His Majesty upon his official visit to Russia. His Majesty welcomed the Grand Mufti and praised the historical relations and the strong bonds of friendship between Bahrain and Russia in light of the common concern and constant endeavor to strengthen them in all fields. His Majesty commended the efforts of the Grand Mufti in introducing the moderation and tolerance of Islam, spreading the principles and concepts of peace and brotherhood, and upholding the values of coexistence, dialogue, and moderation. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain will always remain a beacon of tolerance, moderation, and coexistence throughout its history, and will continue to work for dialogue between civilizations and confront intolerance and extremism as an embodiment of the noble human values and the openness and moderation of its people. His Majesty also stressed that the Kingdom is continuing its noble humanitarian efforts and initiatives to establish a culture of rapprochement and coexistence between religions for the progress of humanity. The Grand Mufti lauded the Kingdom's efforts led by His Majesty the King and its important role in spreading the teachings of Islam and its noble values that encourage tolerance and moderation and its pioneering initiatives in strengthening communication, brotherhood and cooperation between cultures and religions. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at his residence in the Russian capital Moscow the representative of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Antioch and all the East to the Patriarchate of Moscow and all Russia. His Eminence, Archbishop Nifon Skali, on the sidelines of His Majesty's visit to Russia. His Majesty welcomed the Archbishop and reviewed with him a number of issues that contribute to spreading the culture of dialogue and religious tolerance, adhering to the approach of moderation and rejecting extremism. His Majesty praised the Archbishop's efforts in the humanitarian fields and promoting the values of goodness and peace. His Majesty expressed Bahrain's pride in its history of brotherhood, tolerance and coexistence as it embraces various religions and cultures as one interconnected family thanks to the awareness, faith and adherence of its people to noble humanitarian principles based on respect for all. The Archbishop expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the support given to religions in Bahrain, praising His Majesty's pioneering initiatives and efforts in spreading the values of goodness and peace. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa the, and the President of the current session of the Arab Summit and the accompanying delegation departed the Russian capital Moscow following an official visit to Russia in response to the invitation of the Russian President Vladimir Putin during which His Majesty held discussions with the President on the close historical relationship and friendship between the two countries and the latest regional and international of common interest. An official ceremony for farewell was held for His Majesty where the Royal Bahraini and the Russian Republican anthems were played, after which His Majesty shook hands with those who bid him farewell. His Majesty was bid farewell at Vonokovo International Airport by the Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister and the Special Representative of the President for the Middle East, Mikhail Bogdanov, the Head of State Protocol, Igor Bogdehev, the Russian Ambassador to Bahrain, Alexei Skyo Sverik and Bahrain's ambassador to Russia, Ahmed Abdurrahman Aati.
On the occasion of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visit to Russia, the Russian government put a display of the flags of Bahrain and Russia on the Ostan Kino Tower and on buildings along the Novi Abat Avenue in Moscow. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to his brother, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn al Hussein of Jordan, on the occasion of the Independence Day of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. His Majesty expressed his heartfelt congratulations and best wishes to the Jordanian monarch for continued health and happiness, and to the brotherly Jordanian people for further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's wise leadership. His Majesty praised the strong brotherly relations between the two countries and people and the development and growth witnessed in various fields under the strategic partnership that binds them. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan on the occasion of Jordan's Independence Day. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister sent a similar cable to the Crown Prince of Jordan, His Royal Highness Prince Hussein bin Abdullah II. The High Committee for Hajj and Umrah Affairs held its meeting, chaired by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Chairman of the Committee, Nawaf bin Muhammad al Maouda, and in the presence of the head of Bahrain's Hajj mission, Sheikh Adnan Abdullah al Qattan. The committee urged all Bahraini Hajj campaigns to pay the required fees for the electronic path to register pilgrims in order to complete the issuance of the necessary Hajj licenses in return for a number of services provided to the pilgrims and the holy sites of Mina, Muzdalifah and Arafat. The committee reviewed Bahrain's Hajj Missions Committee's preparations, ensured their readiness for this year's Hajj season and their plans to receive Bahrain's pilgrims and followed up on the work of the camps in Mina and Arafat in accordance with the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King to provide care and services to Bahrain's pilgrims in the best possible way. It also noted the great support from the government under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to facilitate the affairs of the pilgrims and provide them with the best services. The committee appreciated the historic and tireless efforts of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques and with the support of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia to facilitate the affairs of the pilgrims and provide them with the best services. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al Naimi, participated in the 27th meeting of the GCC Information Ministers held in Doha. Dr. al Naimi affirmed that the developments and challenges in the region require intensifying media cooperation between the GCC countries, increasing coordination within the Strategic Plan for Media Cooperation 2023. 2030 to strengthen the role of Gulf media in defending the GCC's interests. He said the Gulf media message must be more focused on raising the awareness of Gulf societies about the necessity of solidarity. The minister noted the importance of the meeting in discussing and completing the projects and decisions reached in previous meetings, agreeing on recommendations and decisions that advance Gulf media and keeping the pace with the developments. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness under the directives of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to strengthen media cooperation between Bahrain and GCC countries to serve the common interest and develop the Gulf media system. Dr. al Naimi expressed Bahrain's welcome of hosting the 54th session of the Council of Arab Information Ministers from the May the 27th to the 29th. He affirmed that the Kingdom finished all preparations to host the meeting, especially since it comes directly after the successful hosting of the 33rd Arab Summit, chaired by His Majesty, adding that it was a historic event with the decisions and recommendations issued. He said that in conjunction with the Manama Capital of Arab Media 2024, Bahrain is witnessing media activity and momentum and is working to achieve rapprochement between Arab media professionals and exchange experiences and meetings. Mm -hmm. 
In the presence of the Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma, the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Medical University of Bahrain, held a ceremony honoring the winners of the Health Awareness Art Competition 2023-2024. The Minister congratulated the winning students, praising the distinguished level demonstrated by their work and its connection to the objectives of the competition, thanking the Royal College of Surgeons for its partnership and continuing to implement the competition in cooperation with the Ministry of Education. For his part, the President of the College, Professor Samar al Aloum, thanked the Minister for his support of the competition, praising the artistic works presented by the students and wishing that they would be ambassadors for health in their schools and communities. For her part, the Assistant Secretary General of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Farzana Abdullah al Muraghi, affirmed that this year's competition was distinguished by allowing the participation of students from higher education institutions, with each of the four academic stages focusing on a specific topic among its health awareness topics. At the conclusion of the event, the Minister of Education honored the competition's winners. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah bin Adel Fakhru, met with the Vice Chairman of the National Development and Reform Commission of the People's Republic of China, Ms. Shen Pi. The meeting is on the sidelines of the Minister's participation in the history and investment forum between the Gulf Cooperation Council and China. During the meeting, the Minister of Industry and Commerce underscored the close relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the People's Republic of China, noting the importance of strengthening these relations, especially economic ties and exchanging experiences in the fields of industry and trade, pointing in the same context to the Silk Road Economic Belt, which is a great investment opportunity to increase the economic development of the two countries. For her part, the Vice Chairman of the Chinese National Development and Reform Commission noted her country's keenness to enhance economic cooperation with the Kingdom of Bahrain and support its efforts to achieve sustainable development and enhance the economic stability to achieve the desired goals. The Ministry of Labor's Undersecretary Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa inaugurated the 12th Human Resources Development Conference themed Building the capacities of the Gulf Human Resources, which underscores equipping the region's workforce for the challenges ahead and aligning the Gulf Human Resources with the dynamic needs of the job market. More details in this report. Achieving success in the business world requires a focus on developing the personal and professional capabilities of human capital, the driving force behind production and progress. Recognizing this, organizations across the Gulf are constantly evolving to keep pace with the dynamic job market. This commitment to empowering the regional workforce was the centerpiece of the 12th Human Resources Development Conference themed Building the Capacities of Gulf Human Resources. The conference shone a spotlight on the necessity for a comprehensive national framework to drive capacity-building efforts across the region. Discussions centered on crucial areas such as fostering individual and institutional creativity, aligning human resources strategies with the evolving demands of the Gulf job market, maximizing the potential of regional talents, and leveraging the power of technology to enhance workforce capabilities and talent management practices. And as a regional leader in human capital development, the Kingdom of Bahrain has intensified its efforts to equip its youth with the skills and tools required to thrive in today's rapidly evolving business landscape. From adopting cutting-edge capacity-building approaches to enhancing responsiveness to job market changes, Bahrain is committed to integrating job seekers into the private sector and empowering its workforce to capitalize on technological advancements for sustained growth and productivity. The Chief Executive Officer of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Sara Ahmed Bouhiji, affirmed the Authority's commitment to making integrated efforts with regional partners in the tourism sector to develop and diversify the tourism product in Bahrain and increase the contribution of this promising sector to economic development. She stressed the importance of strengthening partnership areas of cooperation and the exchange of regional experiences and expertise to enhance tourism services regionally and globally. This came during her participation in the 53rd edition of the SCAL Asian Area Congress hosted by Bahrain with the participation of 120 members from the Asian SCAL clubs and leaders in the travel, tourism, hospitality and aviation sectors across the Asian continent. 
Bouhiji explained that the Asian continent is considered one of the main tourism markets targeted within Bahrain's tourism strategy 2022-2026, noting that the authority is currently working on preparing special tourism packages along with introducing more promotional offers.